us at the bar, please. Welcome to Tavern Tales, a curated 5e Dungeons & Dragons adventure set in the tales of a Yawning Portal campaign module by Wizards of the Coast. And now begins the Lost Shrine of Tamo Chan, the third adventure in the Tales from the Yawning Portal, set in the deep jungles of Chult. Come sit down and drink with the enemy, raise a glass and toast to the enemy, and I'm not gonna do this on my own. So come sit down and laugh with the enemy, raise a glass and sing to the enemy, and I'm not gonna do this on my own. So I It's a quiet evening at the Yawning Portal. The din is only 80 decibels or so instead of the usual 95. So when the man in the leather outback hat steps before the fireplace, removes his flannel cloak, and clears his throat, a lot of eyes turn to regard him. <clears throat> Good eye there. I hear tell this is a spot for a bit of storytelling, and I have got a whopper for you, if you'll indulge me. And you may have heard this before, but not like this. Not with these characters. I call it a state of emergency and the lost shrine of Tamo Chan. Like every good adventure, it starts in a tavern. A nice tavern with good liquor and a handsome bartender. Aye, quite a bit like this here tavern, if you get my saying. So anyway, here we are in this here tavern. It's a quiet night. Not unlike this one when the door to the place is flung open, letting the heat and humidity of the Cholton evening in. Two figures crowd the doorway, all but shadows against the daylight, and they look like they're searching for someone. Been searching for a while. The one, a man, turns to the other and says, You're standing in my way. Make haste. I ain't standing in nobody's way. I think you're in my way. <laughs> the two of you have arrived together at this tavern, and so your rude implications upon each other are strangely regarded. <laughs> you look into the tavern. So let's peek into the adventure itself, as these two individuals enter the tavern, witnessed by two other individuals there in the late afternoon. And as we get to those two individuals themselves, let's talk a bit about this tavern. I have been blessed for the last little while with a copy of Taverns and Tankards by Mage Hand Press. And there are some delightful things to include in a game in this book, available on drivethroughrpg.com. So, before we get to the players, let's describe the tavern itself. And if you could all roll me a D100. Great. Aaron. Aaron rolled a 77. What did you get there, Chelsea? 38. Is the name of the tavern Five Orcs Tavern, or is it Shill and Lee's Ale House? The second one. Shill and Lee's Ale House? Sure, let's go with Chivalry's Ale House. Shill and Lee. <laughs> Shill and Lee. Surely, sure. <laughs> you must be joking. No. Never call me Shirley. <laughs> Shill and Lee's Ale House. How did we do Allison and Marie Claire? 20. 67. Great. This book offers several tables upon which to define and create a tavern of unique color and quality. And so on yours, what was your number again? 20. Some clever transmutation has amplified live music playing from the stage to nearly deafening volumes. Cool. And 67. The barkeep, a former military general, uses rank to determine seating and amenities. Only long standing patrons get the good seats. <laughs> Fun. And there is one last bit in here. One of the great things is that you can roll, and there's patrons that you can use to then further create the color and context of the game itself and the adventure to be had. And a myriad of other tables, uh, like rumors and whatnot, that can be rolled upon. So what did you get, Paige? 48. There are three halflings stacked on each other's shoulders, <laughs> about to punch a half-orc in the face, 
sparking a ballroom brawl for the ages. I feel like wow. I've seen this before. That's, yeah. That's awesome. I don't think it's a barroom brawl for the ages. I think it's a one, two, three punch fight and it's done. <laughs> we have three knocked out halflings. No, that orc's going down. Okay. Yeah. By the halflings? Yeah. Yeah, probably not. Come no, on. I'm sorry, Maybe one of those halflings is a barbarian. Yes. He is a barbarian, <laughs> but he's he's still a halfling. Cool. Don't underestimate a halfling barbarian. Yeah, play one and show me. Oh, I have. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> kick you in the shin <laughs> when a halfling goes into rage pretty great I'll bet your ankles off <laughs> so hopefully they gave you some texture and color as to what's going on in this bar room which is ridiculously loud to begin with for the two patrons of Shill and Lee's Ale House who are there regularly. Let's introduce our players and the characters they're playing as we set the scene in the Ale House itself. The first to enter is... I guess probably you because I said you were in my way. So yeah, even though you know who I am. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Except yes. <laughs> this is Paige, and I am playing Alabama Johnson. And he is a Asimar protector, cleric, light domain. He is approximately 6'2". He's very tall and very slim and very good looking. He has almond brown hair with beautiful green eyes and a pearl glistening skin. He's beautiful to look at. Cool. Yeah. Classes. Did I say that? Yeah, Claire. Light domain. Follower of? It is Kinich Aja, who is the Maya sun god. Cool. Awesome. What is your holy symbol? It's somewhere about your body that immediately shows people that you worship this deity. It actually, it's somewhat like a tattoo, and it's it looks like it's embedded into my skin, but it actually has a little bit of a 3D atmosphere to it, and it's a metal trinket. Cool. Mm -hmm. We have a metal piece seared into your flesh. Mm -hmm. Wow, that sounds very Aztec and not Mayan, but I love it. Cool. And this is the symbol of your god? Yes. What does it look like? A sun. (laughs) Well, you're six foot two tall. Asimar blocks the light of the day. And diminishes the thin, slender individual walking behind you, no doubt, as Asmar are not slender of cr- slender of build, typically. Mm-hmm. So what do you do when you walk into the bar? Well, I walk in and I, I kind of see what's happening. And so I stop in my tracks, kind of blocking the doorway, just kind of taking in and preparing on how I want to maneuver around this. And I do not want to get involved in a brawl fight. Yes, or ridiculously loud music. Yeah. That is being performed by a sorcerer and two bards. The sorcerer is just doing all the prestidigitation to make it louder. From behind you steps a... A shadow elf ranger played by Aaron. I'm happy to be back for my fourth, fifth, fifth game at this place (laughs) with you guys. With you, Kyle. Hi. Uh, Yeah, so I'm Aaron. I'm playing Texas Walker. He's a ranger. He is about six feet tall. 195. He's got silver hair with kind of cobalt eyes, fair skin, wearing studded leather armor. Looks very kept together, unlike myself. That's about me. Cool. You move to find a seat? Do you survey your surroundings? I just kind of see that something's about to go down and I get a good seat for the show, as it would seem. (laughs) It's too bad, as the two of you were informed by a halfling barbarian... (laughs) That Shill and Lee's Ale House is the, where you can find the two people who probably know the most about Tamwa Chan and can help you in your continuing adventure to find what are you looking for? I'm looking for my first love, and that's her idiot brother. Yes, looking for my sister. Perfect. We are looking for Arizona Walker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Seeking out Arizona Walker. You've been told to find experts because you are not particular experts on the Olman language and the peoples who spoke Olman hundreds and hundreds of years ago. But your sister, you believe, found the shrine of Tamochan and never returned. So here we are in the steamy, hot jungle of Chult in a small city nestled in the jungle itself, possibly near a waterfall. And there are two individuals in this tavern that are not involved in the barroom brawl, which is 
three punches and three unconscious halflings. <laughs> you do espy one of them. They are a very strange looking individual. And this strange looking individual to your normal climbs seems not so out of place here. Who do they espy first? So I'm Allison and I'm playing Pennsylvania ah! Jones. <laughs> um, and that's her native middle name because she is a patera folk for those spelling at home but pronounced terra folk she is uh basically a pterodactyl eight feet tall has dark green skin and emerald green eyes and is bald because that's how pterodactyls roll yeah and she's you want to tell me what i'm doing right now sure what class is she oh, that would be important i'm a bard but also dabble in archaeology so mm. interesting combo there i say so anyways yes what is she wearing for clothes she sometimes wears leather armor but right now she's not wearing anything nothing nothing <laughs> full on <laughs> nothing naked. at all <laughs> nothing at all so <laughs> sorry random simpsons joke so right now penny as she likes to go by is enjoying the show as well and in the background the loud music is um ballroom blitz so she's just singing along and kind of egging on the fight cool so, yeah it does not take on much egging she's, it's she's over still before it, it begins yeah. it it's a ballroom blitz just you know it's a good time cool this tarot folk is one of the two individuals you've been directed to seek out the other individual is seated close but not too far <laughs> That makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Close, but not too close to the tarot folk. And it is the second individual you've been asked to seek out. Her name is Maryland Jane, and I am Chelsea. I'm playing Maryland. She is a Janassi, which is uh, part genie, and she's part human. And she is a rogue anthropologist. Um, she stands at five foot eleven. She's pretty slim built, but she's very muscular and she's got this really big scar that goes from the, the top right of her skull just over top and all the way down across her face, across her nose to her left side of her chin. And then she's got a, a couple of claw scars that wrap around her neck and then one giant star down her chest. She has picked fights. She's well traveled. <laughs> and then she's got this really light blue skin and darker blue hair that kind of just seems to wisp about without any wind blowing around. So it, just, it looks like it's always blowing in the wind. It's kind of strange because she's an air genasi and half of her head is shaved where the scar runs up and you can see the scar going into the hairline and there's no hair growing in that spot. And she's got these really light, almost white eyes. There we have it. Welcome to the Shill and Lee Ale House, the two of you. This is a establishment that both Penny and MJ have frequented routinely, as they have been here for quite some time. The fight ends, the band takes a break, a lull in conversation, and a hush falls over the bar itself. Hey, uh, Texas, I think those are the people that we've been looking for. What do you mean, we've been looking for? Dude, we came here to find Arizona. Are you dumb? Or have you just been drinking too much? Well, now, maybe that sarsaparilla has been getting too much on me. Let's talk to the weird bird thing and the floaty person over there. See what we can find out. Yeah, you go first. I don't want to get too close. <laughs> well, looky here. If it isn't some green bird thing, <laughs> I was told we were looking for some shrine of tambourine. <laughs> what do you know about it? Are you talking to me? That would be exactly what I appear to be doing at this particular moment. My name is Penny. All right, then. And I don't appreciate your tone if you're looking for help. I am looking for your help, Penny. I apologize for calling you a green bird weird thing. <laughs> Are you not from around here? I am not. Yeah, that's apparent. I'm a terra folk, like a pterodactyl, but, you know, better. <laughs> <laughs> Penny, is this guy giving you a hard time? Sorry, stick me a second. <laughs> Got me off busted. <laughs> well, he's not being very nice, for starters. I get nervous when I talk to birds. <laughs> I'm not a bird. All right, my apologies here, ladies. Um, This is my kind of somewhat brother-in-law, and I believe you're the two that we've been seeking out. We're trying to look for my lover, his, his sister. And we were pointed in your direction that you might be able to help us out. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Yeah, sorry. Oh, you're the guys that um, Alaska was telling me about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah, we can get you to that shrine of Tamochan if that's what you're talking about. Yeah, that would be greatly appreciated. I'm just pretending like I know who she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um... So, I mean, this is probably going to be a bit of a long adventure. What do you do? How are you going to help us? I can stab things. Other things other than us, yeah. Like, you're not going to stab us in our sleep? Oh, no. I'll save that for the people we're supposed to kill, I guess. That's kind of hot. I mean, Arizona would sure like that. (laughs) I can get you into many locked room places and... I speak the language, and I know a lot about the culture. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> and my friend here, Penny, she's also an expert. Are you friends? Are we friends? I just assumed. <laughs> I think we're, like... Colleagues. We're, yeah, we're we work colleagues. at the same we're, university. We're friendly. for Allison. No, <laughs> sorry. <Ask> Allison. <laughs> yeah. Are you friends? It's perfectly acceptable that your character said, my friend over here. I just wanted to get better definition on that from the player of your offer. <laughs> My thought has been that we're friendly. We're not friend friends. Oh right? my. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that Burn. could change. You're more than welcome to consider Penny a friend. Not blocking that at all. I think I just wanted Allison to have her half of that. Yeah. I just think archaeologists probably look down on anthropologists a little bit. So there's a little <laughs> bit of that dynamic going on. If anything, it's the other way around. Yeah. See, this is this is our kind of banter. Yeah. <laughs> we're this kind of friends. <laughs> Oh, I dig in the dirt for a living. Mm. <laughs> I study family dynamics. Who the fuck cares? <laughs> <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the entirety of both of these players' knowledge of their fields. No, of I study. know more about anthropology. <laughs> That's about all I know about archaeology. But again, it's not my field, so I don't care. We roll back in <laughs> and. Maryland has just said to Pennsylvania, this is my friend over here. Yes, well, I'm just always down for an adventure. That's all I'm about. I love, as some might say, love getting into the dirt. So, All right. Well, that sounds like it's a good start. So Arizona, you know, she went on this expedition, right? And never came back. So do you do you know about anything up there that's, you know, making people not come back? Does it have anything to do with this here Shrine of Tamochan? What is my knowledge on the Shrine of Tamochan? Do I have knowledge? Do I need to roll this? <laughs> 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 I would assume I'm pretty well studied considering I'm an anthropologist. Tamochan is the great city of the Olman Empire and has been lost and found several times over the last couple hundred years as the jungle has consumed it and whatnot, and people have thought they'd found Tamochan and had not actually found it. They'd found some other relic of another bygone era village or whatnot, and the city itself was a sprawling place, so even if maybe you did find something, it was a barber shop or whatnot, ruins therein. But there is an excursion to the west of here that believes that they may have found something along the lines of this lost city. And so there have been several undertakings to it, but you're not exactly aware of where it is, and and no one has come back yet from that excursion. So is there kind of like a folklore curse around it? The idea of like people not coming back and it's a doomed expedition? No. Oh, well, that's awkward since no one's come back from it. <laughs> well, it's only been found recently. Uh, yeah, so it probably everything is just rumors. Got it. That's my assumption. Many rumors at this time. All right. Well, I look forward to adventuring with y'all. You know, I'd like to set some ground rules, though. I think if we go around and we each set one rule for this adventure, my rule is... You know, I have a girlfriend until proven dead, so uh, I know I'm beautiful, but you got to stay away, all right, ladies? That's my rule. Yeah, you're not my type. I'm everybody's type. (laughs) 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 Okay, then. Maryland looks at you, half snickers, then winks at Penny (laughs) in a more seductive way. Yeah. Well, Don't not. worry, Stud, you're not my type either. We'll see about that. <laughs> you just, you set just said the ground rule. <laughs> <laughs> For you. <laughs> okay there, Alabama. 
Well, since we're setting ground rules, mine is don't get in my fucking way. If you want to be alive, that is. <laughs> <laughs> my one ground rule is simple. Find my sister. That's all. I don't. Does he understand what rules are? Never mind. Okay. That's my rule and I'm sticking to it. If I walk over you because you're only four feet tall, that's your own fault. Get out of my way. Who's, oh my goodness, okay. I'm six feet. I thought you were four feet. No, I'm, oh, I'm like six foot. I do. No, you thought you said five eleven. Five eleven. I'm five foot eleven. Well, stay on my way. All three of us are pretty much the same height, and then I'm eight I thought feet you... tall. Oh, that's why I got thrown off. For some reason, I thought you were really, really short. <laughs> In comparison, you I got mean, so short. Beside her, I'm kind of short, but we all are. Fine then. Pretty sure you're the shortest. No, nope. I think he's gonna be trouble. Attention. <laughs> There is a bartender standing there. He's wearing a military hat, has like a bunch of medals on his chest. Newcomers, present. <laughs> Why, hiya, Colonel. These two are our friends. They're joining us at our table here. And can I get another round for everybody? And she slips him some extra money for the <laughs> suggestion. <laughs> How dare you, madam? Oh, Colonel. Now, let's not be a sourpuss. Do you want to lose your sacred spot at the bar? I'm sorry, Colonel. No yes, disrespect. I thought so. Continue, newcomers. Hi, I'm Alabama, and this is my kind of somewhat brother in law, Texas. And we're looking for my lover, which is his sister, not to get confused. <laughs> 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 she went on some expedition to that, uh, tomb of Tamachan, and uh, we're hoping to go find her. It's very clear. He doesn't know how to parse any of the things you just said. <laughs> literally. Oh my god, the way you said that. You uh, are new to the Shillandly Ale House, therefore I will give you some respite. Was that respect? <laughs> no. <laughs> respite. Well, I don't want any spit in my drink, sir. <laughs> <laughs> His stony face gets Ever more stony. <laughs> Thank you, Tankards and Taverns, for this lovely character. <laughs> what is your order? You know, I'm good with just a soda. There's a pop. Is it soda or pop? <laughs> I'm good with the water, sir. That is what you meant by order, right? Like our drink order? Or like order in the court? <laughs> I've seen lots of those. I will throw you out of here, madam. I know I'm pretty heavy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a man. I know I'm beautiful, but... He's looking right at the Air Genasi, actually. He's <sighs> looking right at Maryland. <laughs> Did you bring these two into my establishment? No, they came of their own accord. Excellent. But... He takes the money and leaves without saying anything else. Well, that was awkward. Eh, it's just a Tuesday night. <laughs> Yeah, more like a see you next Tuesday. Maybe the next time time you come to a tavern, order a drink. A real one. Like a big boy. But I like my soda pop. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and I ordered mine myself. I believe that's what big boys do. <laughs> I love that. <sighs> <sighs> this is going to be one long trip. <laughs> Couldn't agree with you more. Hey, at least you can fly away. Oh, wait, so I can, can too. <laughs> so could I. We can all go fly together. Oh, God. <laughs> as long as we leave Texas behind. There's <laughs> 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 something I could use to make me fly. You can never leave Texas. <laughs> Texas is always in your heart. <laughs> Texas is too big. He's a little elf, though. The bartender returns. <laughs> oh. Attention! Puts four ale down on the table, turns, and leaves. That's a good man right there. But I don't drink. Oh, God, give it to me. And uh, Mary Lynn downs hers and uh, Alabama's. Yeah. Whoa, slow down there, little lady. Are we going to leave now or are we going to sleep the night first? You don't even know where you're going. I don't where are know you either. How are you going to leave? We need a map. Let's go. Some- <laughs> I'm ready to go fight some shit. <laughs> I love the fact that you four are so comfortable enough that you're like, let's take these new characters out for a spin and drop them into the adventure. <laughs> What's motivating uh, Maryland to go off with these two individuals and help them recover the long lost sister? Anytime she can come in contact with a culture that's been forgotten, she's like, a kid in a candy store she loves it that's why she's in the career that she's in and she also has 
this she's a bit of an adrenaline junkie sure so anytime she's in a situation that is very dangerous or anything like that she's grinning ear to ear and just having a blast stabbing people cool mine's really similar penny loves adventure and like anytime someone's like let's go for an adventure like she's in Oh, okay. Like, no questions asked. Like, and I think we knew Arizona. Wasn't that? No. no okay. I don't think you know Arizona. Okay. You might know of the expedition. Expedition. Yeah. And there's somebody you know who has been on that expedition right. with Arizona. You know some people that have gone on the expedition recently, but you are not aware of Arizona specifically. Okay. There's somebody you definitely know on this expedition. Yeah, because it'd be in our same field. Can I, like... Just tweak mine a little bit then too. Can I say that one of my students I used to teach in the university was also on that same expedition? Sure. Cool. Okay. What's the fourth rule? My rule is if we find something of not monetary value, but of historical value, we are not selling it. We are taking it to a museum or a university. No ifs, ands, or buts. Yeah, sure. I can see your eyes rolling. <laughs> it just might end up in my private collection. <laughs> we all got to make rules. That's mine. Texas has his weird one that we all easily agree to. So <laughs> <laughs> that one's mine. All right. All right. All right. So I'm going to actually. That's three. You're done. <laughs> Cut no, off but that's for the my rest thing. of the night. And you know we he's can't... from Texas, right? Not Alabama. Yeah, that's what's funny. Yeah. Okay. And plus, we can't afford to pay Cadillac every time we use this. <laughs> They're going to be like, yeah, you're going to have to pay us for every all right you used. I'm going to stretch out my talon hand to Maryland to shake on what I just said about at least one item. If it has historic value and not monetary value, belongs in a university or a museum. I can agree to one item. Shake my talon. Air Genasi looks down, spits in her hand and grabs the talon, gives it a shake. And then while they're shaking, I put my hand on top. <laughs> I gotta shake as well. <laughs> and I put mine Can underneath. I punch him? <laughs> no. <laughs> shake. Bam. What are you doing touching me, son? <laughs> I'm just gonna stare at them like this didn't involve you, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny because it really did involve them. It did, them. but I'm not worried about them. I'm worried about Maryland. Fair. <laughs> I have a bit of a reputation, apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, you can't trust anthropologists. Everybody knows this. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Is that what did you say during the handshake? No. So in our original discussion about the story is they were both hired by Arizona's parents and the Walker Foundation. Yep. Did we want to include anything about that? That's up to you. Who was hired by the Walker Foundation? I thought they were. And I thought that's how they knew about Arizona was because the Walker Foundation. If that was the case. I had forgotten that. Kay. And then it was you guys was bringing them along. You can always say. Okay. Because there was no talk of payment or anything like that. Mm -hmm. They were literally like, let's go on an adventure. Boom. Let's yeah. Go. So basically, we don't have to pay them anymore. Mm. Cha -ching. We could. You can always fix that. <laughs> well, nope. I'm thinking that the artifacts are our payment. But they're going to university. <laughs> <laughs> Just one. Just one. Just one. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. But we are going to have to pay for, you know, adventuring things because I'm sure you're not equipped. Oh, I'm already equipped, ma'am. Yeah, I'm pretty equipped myself. <laughs> As far as the family foundation is concerned, you two have already been paid. Thank you. Okay. I don't, I don't know. What to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming that all of our expenses will be taken care of. That's not for me to decide. That's for you yeah, to decide. Yeah, it is. It's the Walker Foundation that's funding this, and you're a walker. I'm not the whole foundation. There's at least two other people who run it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only one third of the foundation. <laughs> <laughs> wow, already assuming your sister's dead, huh? Because I make one fourth. <laughs> I'm only one third of the votes. <laughs> oh, Paige, way to make things way more complicated. <laughs> You're welcome. Not in the tavern. In fact, quite a distance from the tavern is the city jail, where an individual languishes in a cell with an earthy floor and, you know, like no roof. The sun shines right in. There is a wicker bench. And we meet our fifth and last adventurer. Hi, I'm Marie Claire Gould, and I play Florida Man, who is a human paladin of Shar. <laughs> what is Shar? The god of darkness and loss. From where? From Forgotten Realms. Cool. Florida Man is average height for a human woman. She's got uh, long black hair that she ties back, very pale. And her armor is black with uh, lines of, you know, silver 
decoration that uh, really is the only light that you could kind of see in the dark armor. She's got green eyes, if that matters. It does. Zoom right in on them eyes. She is laying on the earthen floor, contemplating, obviously, the the mistakes that Florida Man has made. (laughs) What is the reason Florida Man is in jail right now? Florida Man is a, a vengeance paladin. So I suspect that there was some sort of vengeance being brought out there that happens to be illegal in this jurisdiction. (laughs) And what was that? I'm going to say it was jaywalking and then she was like bringing about some vengeance on the jaywalker and that was a little extreme because she probably kneecapped them. Okay, so wait, so you weren't the one jaywalking. No, no. Someone else was jaywalking? Kneecapping the jaywalker probably was illegal. Florida man kneecapped a jaywalker. (laughs) I mean, it's just a little trip. Great. And this <laughs> jaywalker was someone important. Who were they, Aaron? The, it was the mayor's son. I love that. I was thinking the mayor's son. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All right. Can I reword that? Florida man is now in jail after kneecapping the jaywalking son of the mayor. Yes. <laughs> News at 11. <laughs> Catch it on Fox. (laughs) Only on Fox and Friends. Traffic and sports together on the ones. (laughs) Excellent. You have not been in this town long, Florida man. Do you go by anything other than just straight up Florida man all the time or? I mean, most of the name invokes fear in some people. (laughs) But sometimes she goes by Flo, especially her parents. (laughs) So I guess it's okay if you call her that. Flo was on an expedition out to the city, lost city of Tamuchan, and is the only person to have returned from that expedition after natives ambushed the expedition itself. But you know the location of Tamuchan city. She sighs heavily to herself. That was such a weird adventure. Mm. On the morrow, you will be tried and probably found guilty and potentially lose a limb for your aggressive actions against the son of the mayor. <laughs> Possibly the limb would be your head. You're not too sure. Oh, no. <laughs> no one has been clear. Florida man stands trial with possibility of decapitation. <laughs> Clarifying. Have you told anyone in town that you are aware of the city Tamochan? I returned. What kind of state was I in when I returned? You tell me. Huh? Oh, I returned and I was like in a, a beaten and battered state. So I immediately head to a tavern and I was telling the tale of how we lost our whole party and I just barely escaped with my life. And now I am looking for new vengeances to seek. And in that tavern, a barmaid was like, yeah, son of the mayor is not a good person. You better watch out for him. And I did. And he jaywalked right in front of me. So I kneecapped him. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I like it. We're back at the tavern. All right. So I was told that we were going to have a fifth person in our party. Do y'all know anything about that? One moment. Uh, So Maryland gets up and heads over to the colonel. And she's like, sir. And she stands at attention until the colonel turns to address her very militaristic he does sir i've got a request we are heading out to the shrine of tamachan and we need somebody that can get us there have you heard anything sir no well darn (laughs) okay can i have another drink then sir pours an ale places it in front of you thank you kindly she takes it and goes back to her seat well no luck maybe we should split up and go check and see if anybody knows of anyone on that expedition what y'all think i think i can do better research than an anthropologist (laughs) 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 all right and i go off and i go to talk to a group of people over to the right side okay how far away is everybody from us Fireball. <laughs> Just have your, your handbook so ready. <laughs> what do you mean? Is everyone, say, 15 feet away from all of us? Sure. <laughs> you read their thoughts. I have a spell. Are you going to do the, are you doing the lasso of truth? I could do the zone of truth. <laughs> okay. I don't think people are lying about. <laughs> well, because if we ask, if we ask someone, and they're like, do you know anything about this expedition? And they do, and they're lying to us. Why are they lying? Why would I, they lie? I don't know. Okay. I don't know what their reasons are. By all means. Yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. No, I'll Just save let it. him ca- I'll oh. save it. No, I'll save it. I'll save it. I like the color I'll save it. it for. I'll save it for a better time. She's going to the right. I'm going to go to the left. Okay. 
Yeah, and just talk some people up. In the tavern, the mostly empty tavern. Oh, wasn't anybody here hanging out for the brawl? No, there was oh. like four people involved in that brawl. Three of them were thrown out of the bar. The band is still on a break. Well, I'm going to go... And no one liked them. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I wasn't on stage. So I'm going to go find the most gossipy barmaid. I think you're going about this the wrong way. Because okay. we're looking to... You're looking to talk to specific people when you're looking for specific information. So it looks like you're looking to gather some information in town as to whether or not anybody knows anything about where Tamochan possibly is since a whole bunch of expeditions have gone there lately. Yes? Yes. Mm-hmm. And we need to make some gather information checks. Would this be an insight investigation? Medicine? <laughs> <laughs> what is the check? Is it an information? It'll be a charisma check. Oh man. Oh, man. oh, fiddlesticks. Extronauts pretty good. Oh, even more, man. Damn it, Florida. <laughs> Who beat a 15? I got a 15. I did. <laughs> I also beat a 15. Great. Then the three of you find out that there is an individual who came back from the most recent expedition into Tamochan, but that person is in jail and is going to be likely killed tomorrow for having um, just attacked a person of the nobility. What'd you do, Paige? <laughs> in that moment? No, what What did you get on your die roll? Oh, I got a nat one. Yes. Oh. Which was a total of two. <laughs> <laughs> So you, you are able to find out that this town has a prison. <laughs> <laughs> That's useful. <laughs> yeah. Did I find out where it's no. located? Oh, okay. No. <laughs> you rolled in that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you it. know there's a prison. There's a prison here. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> so you go away for an hour and you come back meeting outside of the tavern. And this is the information that you have. All right, guys. Off. Off. <laughs> Lost my voice. <laughs> <laughs> I got too excited. Cattle horse go. Get them in there. <laughs> All right, guys. I found out. Now, wait for it. There's a prison. That's all I got. Yeah, that's why they leave it to, you know, the scientists in the room. So there is there is a prison. And yeah. the person that we need who's actually been there and could get us a Tamochen is in that prison. But I don't know what you guys heard. But I think bad news is I don't think they have a lot of time. Well, that's unfortunate. Sounds like we need to break somebody out of prison. We could just ask nicely. <laughs> it's not Where's how it works here. Where's the fun in that? <laughs> My thought is we wait and find out when they're actually supposed to be punished because they'll probably be out in public and that would be our best chance. Any other thought? I prefer the cover of the dark. Can't one of us just fly in and swoop them out? That was what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> No, I can probably lock pick all the locks. <laughs> Just saying, that's one of my skill sets. <laughs> I'm a rogue. <laughs> that's fair. Have I tried to get out of the prison? I don't think so. Okay. Have you? No. You are served lunch. What are you given for food? Uh, it's like a gruel stew. <laughs> cool. <laughs> That they use like filler in, like sawdust to like fill it out. Lovely. There's very little meat in these gym mats. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's it's that kind of prison. And primarily I was using it as a place to stay for the night before attempting to escape on my own. Because, you know, my justice is not the justice of this world. <laughs> Okay. Not lawful. Okay. <laughs> Hashtag not lawful. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> maybe chaotic. <laughs> but that's okay, right? I'm I'm a good person, right? I'm a good person, guys. I swear I am. I just occasionally will need cap assholes. <laughs> For jaywalking. Or sons of city officials. I mean, he was a dick. We, this was just the the excuse. Uh, so I would like to attempt to open up the prison door, take a good look at it, and attempt to open it up. Okay, by all means. Do I have lockpicks on? Did they take them away? I, you do not have anything on you. Your, your, all of your equipment has been taken from you and you are in jail. Oh, boo. <laughs> I'm going to just take a look at this construction of the door and stuff like that and see what I can do. Sure. All right. Cute. Ah. Is this like an investigation? Sure. 13. There's a door and there's a lock on it. <laughs> Damn it. It looks too <laughs> solid for me. I'm going to go back to sleep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good attempt. <laughs> an attempt was made. Sure. Florida man attempted to break out of prison. Didn't. And was easily and evaded. Didn't even <laughs> attempt. 
<laughs> looked at a lock. The four of you are standing on a street outside of a tower. Continue. Well, why don't we go check out this prison and see how fortified it is? Maybe we can pay bail and just get him out. Her out? Do we know who this is? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Cool. Kate, so we walk towards the prison. I'm assuming we live in, we know the town, so we know where it is. Or am I assuming wrong? I mean, I have no problem with you knowing where the prison is. That's not really fun role playing. Yeah. Let's go find the prison. Oh, no one found it. No, you find them, you know where the prison is and you walk there. All four of you? All four of us. Mary Lance stick into the shadows because, you know. It is the middle of the afternoon. It is? Yes. Well, what the heck? Height of daylight. <laughs> We're just going to scope it out, my friend. So if you are sticking to the shadows, it looks really obvious as you dash <laughs> and somersault and roll on the side streets to stay in the shadows, of which there are scant. Please do it anyways. Fine. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> no, I was gonna, can I be taking a beer to go while we're going to the prison? Just like chugging a beer down Absolutely. the streets? Absolutely. Awesome. I've got one in each hand. <laughs> wow. I really like my beer. Yep. I think Marilyn has a problem. But anyway, I wasn't going to say it. I'm going to just walk into the main prison building. Like, I'm cool. sure they have an administrative office. You get offices. to the prison. Yeah. And you can see that it is, there is one building, large building that is a concrete stone building. And there are prison cells themselves that are attached to it. They are built out of like bamboo and constructed with rope and whatnot. And they're open to the environment and area there's also as you walk up a courtyard and in the courtyard is some scaffolding that leads to basically where a guillotine is set up so you remember you said it was like an open air prison so there's like no roof the open air cells yeah that three of us could fly this is easy <laughs> so come back tonight fly them out sounds easy enough go cool. back to the tavern <laughs> you're gonna get drunk and then fly in like, why not crash landing ah! <laughs> raise your glass and drink with the enemy raise your glass and sing with the enemy and I'm not Gonna do this on my own. And raise a glass and toast to the enemy. Raise a glass and sing to the enemy. And I'm not gonna do this on my own. This concludes this episode of Tavern Tales, a curated Dungeons and Dragons 5e game set in the Tales of the Yawning Portal Adventure module by Wizards of the Coast. Our intro and outro music is the song Tavern Tales by the Bad Billy Band. You can find out more about the Bad Billy Band on iTunes or at www.badbillyband.com or follow them on Twitter at badbillyband. Thanks for listening. Please feel free to leave us a review on iTunes or find us on Twitter at tavern underscore tales. We'll be back next week with more of the adventure. Crash landing. <laughs> Don't do my voice. It's racist. <laughs> Because that's my race is Terra Folk. It makes sense. <laughs> Escalated quickly. <laughs> Never heard your character even make that sound. I so. did. That's my middle name. No, you made ah as your middle name. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta commit, man. <laughs> that's how it's pronounced. <laughs> ah. Yeah. I'm like, Google Translate. <laughs> I didn't just do ah. It's higher than that. Ah! No, that's one's not as good. I'll have to practice at home now. <laughs> Husband's going to be like, what is happening? <laughs> not during sex. <laughs> That'd be so funny. <laughs> you shouldn't just tell us how it went. Ah! Ah! <laughs> oh, did you say wrong? I'm sorry, honey. You're on my hair. Ah! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Wrong hole again. Oh, God. Oh, oh man. Boo. Too words. far. Too far. <laughs> Too far. Literally. <laughs> oh. I liked Are You on My Hair? You're on my hair. Yeah. I like that one too. Because that's a thing. I just, you know, there's a line and I don't want to live on that side of the line. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> <sighs>